Noon. Broussard hit lead off a good part of the season. And then Mike Papajohn was moved up there, but Papajohn hasn't been swinging the bat all that well. And was put in the number nine spot. We talked about Broussard in the earlier game. One of the smallest, probably the smallest player here in the College World Series. Stands 5-6, weighs in at 128 pounds. Fastball is bunted. Plimpton with a good play and makes it. Mike Jenkins coaching at first for LSU. And on the lines at third, as I mentioned, Ray Smokey Laval, the assistant coaches. That was a nice play by Plimpton getting off the mound on that bunt. We said at the top of the show that LSU is going to try to make things happen, try to put pressure on the defense. But again, understand, Maine plays extremely well defensively. Jeff Rebele, the senior shortstop, batting second in the order, steps in. A good eye. He leads the team in walks. And Plimpton, 294 is a good contact hitter. Plimpton is a good athlete. Once he releases that ball, he's a good fielder out there. Here a little up on the left side of the infield. The third baseman, Dutel, is playing even with a bag. And the shortstop, Bordick, is up about three steps. There you see the left side. Outfield playing straight away on Jeff Rebelay. Up by Plimpton, a long, slow windup. Good point, Sam. Obviously, part of his repertoire is to put a little bit of a hitch in his in his windup, trying to get the batter a little bit off balance. Now he has that good hard slider you just saw. One-two pitch bounce slowly wide of third. The shortstop for it. Tough play. Doesn't get there in time. Beaten out by Rebele. Had the third baseman been able to cut it off, he might have had a shot at getting Rebelay. Mike Dutel is a freshman. He's got to come get that one. They see he got in the way of the shortstop, Bordick. But the third baseman on a slow roller, he has to slash across the infield. He's got to come get that ball at top speed. You'll see he sort of rounds this ball off. He gets in the way here. Here comes Dutel, sort of gets in the way of the shortstop. And of course, Bork is tough on getting the ball out of his glove. As a consequence, Rebele, who runs well, is safe at first. Now we'll see what LSU does to put the early pressure on. It's an infield single for Jeff Rebele. The batter is Joey Bell. The leading home run man for LSU had two hits in game one of the World Series. Fastball on the ground. Bordick off his glove in the left field. Rebele is around second but holds up as Gagner comes up with the ball and gets it back in the infield. Hard hit ball, but we'll wait for the official scorer's ruling on this one. It, it looked appeared. like a ball that was playable by the shortstop. It was most definitely playable, but Bordick, it appeared that he was thinking about the possibility that Rebele might be going on the pitch and was actually cheating towards second base. As a consequence, his motion off the off the pitch was taking him the wrong way. That ball went back to his right and he couldn't get his body in front. And all of a sudden we have a rally or a possible rally going here for LSU. So Plimpton in some trouble. It's an error charge to the shortstop Mike Bordick. Runners at first and second with one out and the hard hitting first baseman junior Jim Bowie the toothpick man steps in. Fouls it. Now we saw when LSU played against Loyola Marymount that Tim Liana had a lot of success in pitching Bowie down and in. Now, most of the times, the left-handed power hitter like Bowie is, you don't want to throw him down and in. That's his power. That's his power scoop. But Bowie likes the ball away from him. If Plimpton throws him away, Bowie will most definitely go opposite field with him. Outfield straight away on Jim Bowie. Infield is looking for two. Good fastball from Plimpton. Jim Bowie leading the team in hitting with a 364 batting average, 16 home runs, 62 RBIs. Another California product. He's from Susan, California.
strike on a fastball. Wardick having a good season. He played in the College World Series two years ago as a freshman and has improved steadily. You saw Lower bounce that curveball down in the dirt. And you see Rob Leary getting the signs from Skip Burtman, the head coach of LSU, who calls all the pitches. But Lower has great confidence in that breaking ball. Fastball is down low. Bordick with a good eye. He leads the team with 88 base hits. Stan Lower over the last two weeks was probably LSU's best pitcher. SEC tournament and in the regional as well. Hit hard. Base hit for Bordick. First hit of the College World Series for Mike Bordick as he went 0 for 4 of the game against Arizona in game two of the College World Series. Rob Roy who played in the College World Series in 1984 with the Black Bears of Maine is coaching at first. Bob Whalen is the coach at third. The head coach is on the third base side in the dugout Dr. John Winkin and here is First team All-America, Rick Bernardo. Look at those numbers. Outstanding season. And they had a fine game against Arizona. Three for five with a home run and two RBIs. Good power to all fields. In fact, Jerry Kendall, the head coach of Arizona, after watching Bernardo, said, if we play Maine again in the series, we're going to walk this guy every at bat. It's pretty high praise. <laughs> And that, of course, with a double elimination tournament is something that could happen. The double elimination tournament, where you're allowed two losses before you're out. A bit of a safeguard against uh, maybe a bad bounce or a bad call here or there, a bad break, like uh, losing a fly ball in the sun for LSU in game one of the series. Let's talk about that. The sun may be a fact today. Joey Bell is back out in right field. Oh, he's way back in right field. Now, in all fairness to Joey Bell, who had problems in that first game with the Sun, LSU plays almost all their games at home at night. And the day games, right field's not the Sun field. Breaking ball is fouled back. It's one and two. Irv Brown is in the Sun. Well, right now he's on the third base side in the shade. Irv, what do you see? And Sam, you guys are making an excellent point about the Sun field. They do pay, play 80% of their games at night. Yesterday at practice, Skip Burton worked all day I shouldn't say all day, but he worked a great portion of the practice on hitting balls into the sun field. He doesn't believe in the glasses. He just doesn't think that people know how to use it. He worked very hard trying to get his people to just play the sun. One man out, runner at first, bottom half of the first inning. The runner goes. Pitch is taken. The throw down by Leary, not in time. Bounced away from Rebele, and Bordick has a stolen base. So it's Maine willing to make things happen, trying to make things happen behind two to nothing. You see a breaking pitch comes in. Leary has a solid arm, but on a breaking ball, and Lower takes some time to come onto the plate. The throw is in the dirt. Rebelly, good, good job in locking this ball down. Russell goes to the center field. 18th stolen base for Mike Bordick gives him the team lead, one ahead of center fielder Gary Lafierre. Count is two and two on Rick Bernardo. Breaking ball hit in the hole. Nice play by Bowie. Turns, goes to Lower, just in time. Lower not quick getting over there and just did beat Bernardo. That play was made by Lower, who really had to sprint to beat Bernardo. Bowie really ranging far to his right, twists nicely, takes his time, throws a strike to Lower on the run, just beats Bernardo. The key to that play is Bowie gives Lower the ball early. You could always run to the ball like a wide receiver just like catch that ball up then find the base but you can't do Sam is try to find the base while you're trying to find That's the right. baseball Bowie made a good play here's the cleanup man Dan Kane he had a home run in the game against Arizona went the opposite way over the right field fence two men out runner at third for Maine LSU leading two to nothing scoring two runs in the top half of the first inning. Now, as you watch Dan Kane, he's a notorious late swinger at the plate. Breaking ball stays inside. See how he holds that bat and his elbows locked in. It's very tough for a big guy like this to get that body opened up. So a lot of times he will swing late. The ball will go shooting off in the right field. They're giving Kane the left field line as Hartwig shades towards left center. Papa John in center shaded a bit, about three steps towards right. 
That breaking ball stays inside. Joey Bell is straight away in right field and deep. You got a shot there of Dan Kane's hands. John Winkin says this, this boy is a good old backwoods main axe swinger. <laughs> Two one pitch to Cade. Fastball is low and it's three and one. Lower working the corners. As we said, he'll throw the breaking ball at any time he has that much confidence in putting that curveball for a strike. Kane has 66 RBIs this season. Three one pitch. Check swing gets past the pitcher. Tough play for Broussard. He makes it. The designated hitter, he pinch hit in game one of the College World Series, had a single and an RBI. And if you watched a couple of weeks ago on ESPN, he pinch hit against Florida State and had a huge monster two-run home run. Pinch hit in the ninth inning. Sam, we have to talk here a bit about pitching strategy. As you mentioned, both teams have one loss, one more, and they go home. The question now with Plimpton giving up two runs in the first inning. See a nice that hard New England slider for nope. Faulkner. I'll get you on I'll that. Come back to that. But this kind of game, the emphasis really is on at what point do you take out your pitcher? Because this is the kind of game that can really come back to haunt you during the course of the winter. A lot of it depends on what you have in the bullpen. Good fastball. <laughs> All right, it's time to uh, answer the question, what is a New England slider? A New England slider, from a batter's point of view, those cold 40-degree days up in, in Maine or in Boston. There it is. Go ahead. Okay, and you have a situation where the guy gets you just like that. You, you see the ball all the way. The last second, it breaks like three, four, five, six inches, and you get that ball off the end of the bat. And boy, do your hands feel cold. And they just defeat. It was our judgment that John McEnroe played outstanding. Dan Etzweiler, the big second baseman, leads off the bottom half of the second inning for Maine. Etzweiler had three hits in the game against Arizona, each of them driving in a run. One was a home run in the opposite field. There's that little camera on the top of the umpire's mask. It's attached to a light battery pack on his belt, and it'll give you a great view of the ball coming in from the pitcher. We'll cut it in for you several times during today's ball game. I think you'll enjoy it. Oh, speaking of Etzweiler, Sam, if I'm having a basketball game between second baseman, <laughs> I think I'll go with Etzweiler as my first round draft choice. Over 5'6", 128, Broussard. Etzweiler, not the uh, traditional size for a second baseman. Now, you know second baseman pretty well. He's a pretty big guy to play second base. You would think a guy that big, as you said, 6'2", 6'3", about almost 200 pounds, wouldn't have the agility out there. Fastball is fouled back. Looking at Etzweiler, he reminds me a lot of Tony Kubek. Yes, he does. He was an outstanding shortstop for the New York Yankees. Big, big and rangy. rangy. Yes, yes. But big again, arm. you usually want somebody at second base kind of quick, the quick feet, that kind of thing. You don't normally see that in a second baseman, but Etzweiler's turned 58 double plays this year, a New England record. Goes with a pitch and fouls it out of play now on the left field side. That's Wilder straight up and down at the plate. John Winkin thinks he's just beginning to develop into his potential. And as you see with those numbers there, had a real good year. He's also one of those Southern ball players. 
from Allentown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> a walk on at Maine. Fastball just missed outside. Good pitch by Lower. Yeah, Winkett, he's so delightful. He's so honest. Yeah, he said this kid's a walk on because his parents used to go skiing in Maine. <laughs> and they like the state. <laughs> Dr. John Winkett, 40 years coaching baseball, 12 at the University of Maine in Orono. Breaking ball on the ground to second. Broussard with a good hop. On to Bowie. One man out. Irv Brown, what's it look like at field level? Well, you know, I wanted to visit with Rick for a minute. These kids are good looking athletes from New England, and there's no better proof of how well they're thought of. The Southern schools are recruiting. I've always felt, Rick, that kids from New England know how to play the game. They just they, they know what's going on. Oh, they sure do. And keep in mind, kind of an oddity here, Maine's been to the World Series a number of times. So in essence, they're the veteran ball club. This is LSU, the Southern ball club. This is their first trip out here. Fifth time in the last six years that Maine has played in the College World Series. Here's Bill Reynolds, the catcher, having an outstanding year. 17 home runs. Had five home runs in the Northeast Regional, four straight in the game against St. John's in the final that eliminated the Red Men. And you'd think that hitting four home runs in one game would be quite an accomplishment. Nice play by the third baseman, Yurton. Two men down. But the fact of the matter is, Reynolds did it once before, back in 84 in a summer league game up in Maine, hit four home runs in one game. Well, Reynolds. Hit the ball well. Here's Don Hutchinson, the right fielder. Now, numbers seven, eight, and nine in the order for Maine went hitless in the game against Arizona, had five strikeouts, and did not get the ball out of the infield. And that's got to be a bit of a concern for Maine. Definitely has to be. Now, Hutchinson has a sprained ankle. He usually runs pretty well. But his left ankle is taped up. He sprained it a couple of weeks ago. Sprained it rather severely. He's still playing. Doesn't run great right now. Is in there for his defense. Got a good arm. And has been hitting well this year. Hitting at 345 coming into today's game. In fact, normally he is the leadoff batter for the Black Bears. But today, because he's not running that well, he's down number seven spot. Very patient hitter. He's sort of a table setter. Fastball is low. Count is two and one. Outfield playing rather shallow on Hutchinson. Bell is over in right center, giving Hutchinson all of the right field line. Bell is very shallow in right field. A lot of room behind him. Hutch Hutchinson can certainly turn on the ball and pull it. Down the third baseline into left field, a base hit for Hutchinson. He makes the turn, but he'll hold on. As Hartwig gets the ball into the infield quickly. So a two out single for Don Hutchinson gives him his first College World Series base hit. Yurton's an excellent third baseman. He was creeping up for the possible. See, he's on the grass there. That ball would just squirt by to his right. Make a valiant effort to knock it down. Full length extension of the body, but that ball goes through. Now Hartwig, because of his speed, hustled over and got that ball and kept Hutchinson to a single. Here's Dave Gagner, the left fielder, co captain of this team. And a real inspirational leader. Maine was 9 and 16 early in the season. And turned things around. One of the reasons, the leadership of Dave Gagner. Oh, what a, what a great story behind Gagner. Voter the co-captain, even though he wasn't a starter, in the fall, he was on the B team. And yet, and John Winkin, and this is a quote, he said, this kid couldn't play for any other Division I team in the country. But he's such an inspirational kind of guy. He makes things happen. He gets the job done. He runs well. But honestly, <laughs> Winkin says the tools just aren't there. He does it just by pure heart and grit alone. Just has a tremendous desire to win. <laughs> pitch is over. Count is one and one. Two men out in the bottom half of the second inning. Gagner stands 5'9", 170 pounds. He's from Arno, Maine. John Wicken puts a great deal of emphasis upon his players and their and their heart. What they inside that intestinal fortitude to get the job done. And he says this kid. Nobody's got a bigger heart this than kid Gagner. Gets the job done. I don't know how he does it. He just does it. 
Pretty good year for him, hitting 335. Runner at first with two men out. Hutchinson doesn't have a big lead. He's holding. Good pitch by Lower. Good location on that pitch, and that is a key to Lower's effectiveness. Lower will keep the ball inside and out, but curiously, he'll throw the breaking ball inside and out. Now, he relies upon his fastball, of course, to set up the breaking ball, that good three-quarter arm deuce. Breaking ball foul tipped and held by Rob Leary, and Gagner is struck out. Sides retired. He bunted to lead off the first inning and was thrown out by Jeff Plimpton. Good fastball by the sophomore, Jeff Plimpton. Keep in mind that it's very warm here in Omaha. Temperature in the mid 80s and it's probably much hotter on the field. On the ground in the hole and into left field. Broussard with a leadoff single here in the third inning. Third hit of the ball game for the Tigers of LSU. And the reason why I mention that is because the heat will take its toll on the pitchers. Clinton, fastball. This ball just finds a little bit of a hole. As you saw, Dutel was up on the grass looking for that bunt by being pulled in. That ball went right by him to his left. And Bordick was playing Broussard up the middle and not expecting Broussard to pull. Here's Jeff Rabelais. Singled and scored in the first inning. Now with a leadoff man on, Broussard with good speed. Let's see what LSU does. Broussard fakes running. And you notice everybody moving on the play. The fake bunt, the fake run. LSU making people L react. LSU felt they have to get things going here. Now you'll see Broussard, that's the fake steal, takes a couple of steps and stops. Meanwhile, as you mentioned, Sam, Rebele put the fake the bunt. So he's looking to get these guys in motion. If you can get the, def the defense moving in the infield, things can really happen out there. Broussard outfield. with good speed. Excuse me. Sorry, outfield is playing straight away on Rebele. And LSU feels that Clinton takes a little too long to get to the plate with that ball. He's one of those guys with a pretty good sized leg kick. A slider, the check swing by Revelle. He was upset with that. Remember, when Clinton goes from a full windup, he likes to have that little pause, that hesitation in his windup. It's part of his deception. But obviously, with a man on base, particularly a runner like Broussard, who runs well, he can't go with that. A little chat between Plimpton and Reynolds, not in front of the plate. Revelle, good man with a bat, makes good contact. He's got a good eye. Count is on two. Temperature at game time was 86 degrees. Bright sunshiny day with a light wind blowing. Soft toss to first base. In a game like this, every pitch counts, so you can't have any wasted motion out there in the mound. We saw that yesterday with Jeff Bronke of Oklahoma State. He ran out of gas in a hurry, and it cost him. On the ground, again in the hole. Bordick gets there and doesn't have a play. Save. Bruce Sorry beats it. That's twice in a row we've seen Bordick shading toward the middle and the ball hit in the hole and he hasn't been able to make the play. That's a good point, Sam Rosen. Again, Dutel, the freshman, playing top on the grass looking for a possible bunt, possibly. But again, this ball gets way past him. No range to his left. There's no play at all at first base. But Bruce Sauter runs well, runs in there standing up. It's an infield single. Runners at first and second with nobody out. And here is... An early pressure-filled situation for the Black Bears of Maine. Joey Bell steps in. He reached on an error by Bordick, the shortstop, on a hard-hit ground ball in the first inning. He also scored on Jeff Yurton's double. That pitch way outside. And you can see Plimpton now going to school on Bell. Does not want to get that ball too close inside where Bell can really turn on it and put one out deep in left field. Bernard... Bernardo is playing up at first base, up uh, on the grass, even with the grass line. There you see him. 
just guarding against a possible bunt, but Bell is up there swinging away. Again, this this comes into play with scouting reports. Now, Bernardo just said up on the grass for a possible bunt. But Skip Bertman says, hey, this guy's up there to swing the bat. He's not up there to bunt or take pitches. He holds our career home run record at LSU, and he's only a sophomore. And Plimpton has to, again, has to know from a scouting report that Bell goes well to right field. You throw him away, he'll go to right field. A lot of things happening out there in the mind of the batter and the pitcher. Playing Bell straight away. Runners at first and second. 2-0 pitch popped up. It's playable in the infield. Dutel in foul territory. Puts it away. Big out that time for Jeff Clinton. I'm sure Joey Bell, you know he wants that pitch back again. This is from the umpire's camera. Joey just got under it just a little bit, got that ball off his hands, and set up a skyrocket. Of course, no infield fly since that ball was in foul territory. Rebelay the runner at first. Broussard is at second. One man out. Sophomore Jeff Plimpton. Let's see now if Maine can use that double play combination. There's Jim Bowie in his first year at LSU coming over from Sacramento City College where he played junior college baseball. Good pitch on the inside corner again as they go inside to buoy you as you see crowds the plate in fact his arms are actually over the plate here it is the book Look of course pitch. on buoy that low breaking pitch that Plimpton got him on the first time once again he says OK let's see hit that pitch and so far Jim hasn't gotten to it. Now the question is is whether Plimpton can consistently put that ball there. Love that umpire's camera. What a oh, shot. That's terrific. Best seat in the ballpark. Wardick trying to sneak in behind Broussard. Fastball just inside. Count is one and one on Jim Bowie. One man out. Runners at first and second. We're in the top half of the third inning. LSU having scored two runs in the first inning, leading two to nothing over Maine. Clinton really working that inside corner. Remember, Bowie wants that ball away from him. Staying inside, but that one is low, and the count is two and one. They wanted to peel it from the third base umpire as far as Bowie going around, but he didn't. John Winkin sits down with his starting pitchers before every game and goes to the other team's lineup from top to bottom, the strategy and how they're going to pitch him. There's John Winkin. Dr. John is his name. Now that time is interesting. Reynolds, the catcher, set up outside. That pitch was way inside and low. You see the catcher puts the ball in the inside corner. That ball comes way inside. Down is three and one. On Jim Bowie. And the dangerous Jeff Yurton is on deck. Again, the fastball low and inside, and Bowie couldn't handle it. Now, Bowie, who's a good hitter at adjusting, right now he's saying to himself, you know, I'm yanking my head on that pitch. I see it well. I see it come the first 40 feet. The last second, it drops out, but I'm turning my head. It's a basic sort of little league of high school mistake. He's got to keep his face in there and see the ball the entire way. Runners are going on a 3-2 pitch, and he lost them. The bases are loaded. So Skip Bertman had his runners going with one man out on the full count pitch. The bases are loaded for Jeff Yurton. Clinton once again trying that work inside corner. This time he just misses inside a little too close. And Bowie adjusts and holds up, gets the walk. It's like a slider. They try to get Bowie to bite on, but it was way inside. Here's Yurton who doubled the left center field to drive in the two runs for LSU. And Dr. John Winkin is on his way to the mound. I have a little chat with his pitcher, Jeff Plimpton. There's nobody warming up in the bullpen for Maine. So this is just a strategy session on how he wants to pitch Jeff Yurton. Irv Brown is keeping an eye on Jeff Plimpton. What do you see, Irv? 
went back and took a look Sam with the scouts he's throwing 89 he's getting a decent movement he's running the ball a little bit problem to me is everything looks the same from ground level he really hasn't taken much off maybe that's why they've been able to time him for uh, the number of base hits they have at this time four good point remember I mentioned that he uses that deception out of the full windup but a hesitation in his windup he can't do that of course the men on base as a consequence I should say the pitch is very easily picked up by LSU infield looking for two from Maine third baseman Jeff Yurton Plimpton pitching from the stretch with the bases loaded that pitch is inside looks like a slider Yurton a senior from Rancho Cordova California it's only a top of the third inning but it is a critical part of the game here Yurton is a very dangerous hitter he usually makes contact hits the ball hard just missed outside he's got a good eye as well Yurton leading the team in doubles came up with his 24th double of the season in the first inning that's what prompted the visit to the mound by Winken just to make sure Plimpton was staying within himself not overthrowing not being too fine that pitch on the inside corner at the knees a fastball Broussard at third base is trying to shake up Plimpton by dashing off third base as Plimpton goes to the stretch or perhaps he's hiding behind third base <laughs> he's not that small <laughs> Down is two and one on Jeff Yurton. On the ground. Etzweiler can't get there. One run is in. Around third is Revelle and coming in. The throw is not in time. Two runs are in on a base hit by Jeff Yurton and LSU leads four to nothing and Yurton has all four RBIs. Clinton did his job here. He got Yurton to hit the double play ground ball. The problem is that the infield here is very hard. And you see Etzweiler just can't get to it, even though he's 6'3", but that was the ground ball they wanted. It just went about two feet to the, the far side of Etzweiler. You see Revelay, the nice fly at the plate, just gives nothing at all to Reynolds to tag, and he gets that just with his leg and his hand to make sure. Pretty good throw by Hutchinson in right, but Revelay's in there. Runners at first and second. Still only one man out, and the catcher Rob Leary steps in. LSU leading four to nothing, and now warm-up action is beginning in the bullpen for Maine. Steve Lubier, number 24, is getting up a right-hander. Slider goes down low to Leary. So now the question is, with a four-run lead. Again, holding your breath, at what point do you make a move to your bullpen? It's getting close. Lubier, the right-hander. Hit on the ground to third. Dutel has juggles. It goes to second in time. Throw to first is not in time. An interesting play because Bowie held up between second and third. Yes, and he Dutel did. made the throw to second for the force. Again, the freshman down there at third base, and you always wonder the freshman, he sort of boots this ball, finds it. Now he's a little bit shaken by the fact that Bowie is right there. He could have gone after and tagged Bowie to make sure of one, but if he does that, there's no way he's going to get two on the play. And by juggling it, that lost the chance for the double play right there. And that's why that was an excellent pivot to get out of the way of the on charging Yurton. They almost turned it, though. Here's Craig Faulkner, who struck out his first time up. Two men out. Hit in the air. Off the first base side. Bernardo couldn't find it in the sun. Etzweiler comes over and misses it off his glove. Fighting the sun all the way. He had the glasses down, but seemed to shy away from the fence a little bit. And it went off the end of his glove. One of the problems of not knowing the ballpark is you see Etzweiler just sort of dancing out there, doesn't know how far he is to the fence, when in reality he's at least a good 10, 15 feet away. He's right, right, right in the warning track right there, had plenty of room. You got to find the fence and then come back. Even with the sunglasses on, it's still a tough sun, and of course it is breezy here. Down is one strike on Craig Faulkner. 
Walker, the second string catcher, is the designated hitter today. Good slider by Plimpton. That's his bread and butter. That's his pitch. That slider. You got to wonder now with LSU, Leary doesn't have great speed at first, but you never know. They want to make things happen out there. Two strikes to Faulkner. Fastball misses. The runner goes from first to throw down, goes through, and they'll score. Bowie is in. Leary is hung up and is tagged out by Etzweiler, but LSU gets the run. They work the double steal as Bowie scores from third, and LSU leads five to nothing. And Mike Dutel, the freshman third baseman, stands in. Pronounced Dutel, as checked out by Rick Wolf. Behind the batting cage, we've heard Doodle, Doodle Dutel, Dutel. Dutel. I said, and Mike, what's it going to be? He said, it's Dutel. And it's funny because he grew up around the block from uh, Dr. Winkins' in-laws. And John said he's known this kid since he was in Little League. And he says it's Doodle. <laughs> he hasn't been able to pronounce it yet. <laughs> Two strikes on Mike Dutel, the freshman third baseman, who started the season in center field. And again at that point in the season when Maine was 9 and 16, he came in to play third base. LaPierre went from left field to center field. Gagne went into left, and Maine started to click. Good breaking pitch from lower, just missed. Excellent pitch. And you got to wonder, you know, Coach, it's always tough coming to the College World Series. It's particularly tough when you're a freshman. And Dutel's been busy today. He's been on some key plays already. That fastball rides high, and the count is full on Mike Dutel here in the third inning. But well, Winkin says, hey, I don't care if the kids are freshmen. Either he can play or he can't play. If he can compete, he'll compete. Maine is down five, but if anything, they learn uh, in game <laughs> two. It's not over till it's over, huh? Till it's <laughs> till the last batter is out. As Arizona won it with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. He lost him. Good work by Dutel working the walk, leading off the bottom half of the third inning. Throw the top of the order, center fielder Gary LaPierre stands in. And now Jeff Rebelay, the shortstop and the, the team leader out there on the infield, comes in and says, hey, look, Stan, just throw strikes, my friend. Let us handle the ball out here. The last thing you want to see your pitcher do, of course, for the five-run lead is walk the leadoff batter, particularly when he's the number nine man in the order. LaPierre has 86 base hits. Tries to bunt and fouls it back. Lubier continues to warm up in the bullpen. That's because he's been a starting pitcher all season long, needs some extra time to warm up. So he continues to work and either to start an inning or at least be ready in case Plimpton gets into further trouble. Good point, Sam. There is a difference in mentality between a starting pitcher and a relief pitcher. Relievers love to get up and get that adrenaline going in a hurry, and the starters take a little more time. They want to get into the groove a bit more, make sure all the, the joints are working. But John Winkin knows if he brings in Lubier to pitch, give him a, a few extra minutes to warm up. Again, he's not accustomed to being a relief pitcher. That pitch is on the outside corner. Count is one and two. LaPierre, another hitter who stands way off the plate. And if you can thread the needle on the outside corner, you've got a good shot at getting him. We see that a lot in the World Series. All these kids way back in the box, way off the that bat, he can't let's practice swing. He can't get the outside corner. Fastball hits slowly to third. Yurton to Broussard on. for one on the first. Not in time. They get the lead man. There's one man out. Broussard turning it over. That's Rebele, the shortstop. We like the play by Yurton as he talks to him. There's the third baseman. Yurton, nice play, nice turn by Broussard. But you see, he threw that ball off bounds. And when you do that, you get no zip on that, on that throw over to first base. And of course, LaPierre runs well. He's safe by a, by a hair at first. The shortstop, Mike Bordick. Breaking ball hit up the middle. 
Rebelay steps That's on one. second on the first for the double play. Craig Faulkner leads off. He was at bat when the inning ended in the top half of the third on the steal in which Bowie scored. Leary with that delayed steal was tagged out, but the play worked for LSU as he got the run. Fastball down low. Plimpton, Jeff Plimpton, the starter went three innings, allowed five runs, three of them earned, five hits, walked one and struck out two. LSU five and mean nothing as we go to the top half of the fourth inning. This game to be followed by Oklahoma State and Indiana State. Those two teams trying to stay alive in the College World Series. Loyola Marymount, Arizona, Miami, and Florida State winners in the first round. Keep in mind that Lou Bier is normally a starter. And starters are different from relief pitchers. They take time to get into the game. In fact, when I was coaching, I always wanted my starting pitchers to really break a sweat in the bullpen. Too many times a kid comes in the game and, and psychologically they feel that, well, if I really throw hard in the bullpen, I'll have nothing left of the game. But the fact of the matter is, you want to be really throwing hard in the bullpen, so by the time they get to the mound, you're already throwing strikes and hitting the corners. Rob Hartwick bunted his last time up. And it was caught by the third baseman Mike Dutel. Lead off walk to Craig Faulkner here in the top half of the fourth inning. And starting pitchers usually have problems in their first inning. So although it is the fourth inning of the game, it's the first inning for Lubier. Faulkner is not a threat to run, a big guy, 6'5, 230. He's a good sized brute down there at first. <laughs> Wonder how he escaped the football coach's attention. No, oh, they may be watching him. He's got some power, that's for sure. Steve uh, Lubier. Lubier has to get ahead of the batters. As I said, his big pitch is that drop curveball, but he can only throw it to be effective when he's ahead of the batter. And so far, he's falling behind. Walker fake going. Pitch over for a strike to Rob Hartwig, the speedy left fielder. Been an outstanding catch in the first inning. We've talked about the fact that Hartwood stands a pretty good distance from the plate. He has made an effort to get a little closer, Sam. But it appears he's still a pretty good two, three feet from home plate. And again, you can see swinging that bat, getting to the outside corner, it's going to be difficult. Most kids, when they swing the stick, they stride towards the pitcher. Very few actually stride into the pitch. And Hartwick does strike towards the pitcher, not into the pitch. On the ground, again in the hole. This one's at the left field. And that same ground ball has happened to Maine at least three times, actually four times. One time, it went off the glove of Bordick at short. What's happening here is Bordick feels that Lubier and Plimpton aren't going to be pulled by LSU. As a consequence, he's playing close up the middle, close to second base. So he has no chance in that ground ball. If he starts playing a little closer to third, those are routine plays. That's right. He's accustomed to his pitchers overpowering the opposition. And these guys, they aren't doing it. They don't have, don't have a good pop on the fastball against the Tigers. Sixth hit in the ball game for LSU. Irv Brown, what do you see from your vantage point? Well, I wanted to visit with Rick for a minute, Sam, about the infield alignment. Eddie Stanky, Rick, always felt that that third baseman should play over. Here they go. They're running, and they've got it stolen. Faulkner steals. Who said he wasn't a threat to steal? Said he was a pulling guard. Wow. Got a great jump, and he stole the base. The fake that, bunt that, by Papa John at the plate. Can you imagine in the LSU dugout, Faulkner steals a base, and Hartwick wow. stays at first? He'll never heard the end of that. Great jump by Faulkner. Again, the play was made because Papa John squared around. So Maine felt that, gee, look of sacrifice bunt time. And they all forgot about Faulkner. Now, let's see the speedy Hartwig at first. Let's see what he does. He's the leading stolen base man on the team with 29. He loves to run. Well, if he steals and Faulkner steals home, then I'll really be impressed. 
He's going. It's foul back. Going back to the game plan, LSU, Skip Bertman said, we must put the pressure on the other team. We must see if Maine can stop us offensively. We're going to run. We're going to fake bunts. We're going to fake steals, everything. And they're doing it. Mike Papajohn, his superstition today, <laughs> all the starters, including the pitcher, putting a slice of lemon in the left cheek, a slice of lime in the right cheek a half hour before game time. A very superstitious man. He broke the superstition against Loyola Marymount, went to Raisins in their Gatorade, and it didn't work. So he was very upset about that, and he's gone back to the lemons and the limes and the cheeks. Superstitions work well, particularly if you can hit. <laughs> Good pitch on the outside corner, struck him out. Papa John has struck out, one man down. Runners at first and third now. We'll look for Hartwig to run from first base. This is a pitch in which Papa John just is not going to get the, the slider on the outside corner. There's no way he's going to get that pitch. That's a perfect pitcher's delivery. An important strikeout for Wubier. Burke Broussard, the second baseman, steps in. Hartwig dives back on the throw down. Hartwig with a good lead at first. He's going. Pitch is taken, and the throw goes through. Hartwig has the base stolen this time. The man at third does not go. Faulkner holds. That one went through and almost went into center field. The shortstop Bordick getting there just in time. Real confusion by man by man this time. But Redelay fakes the butt. Etzweiler has to go to first base to cover. As a consequence, the shortstop Bordick wasn't at second base in time. Actually caught that ball behind second. If Faulkner could run or runs better, he could have scored e easily in that play. Just confusion out there by the defense, and LSU was causing it. Now Maine brings up the infield halfway with the runners at second and third. One man out. On the ground slowly to second. Etzweiler comes to the plate. Not in time. And it's 6 nothing LSU. As they continue to run well on the bases, the big guy, Craig Faulkner, scoring on the infield grounder. That's one of the nice play in this ball. Took the short hop. Perhaps he could have played a little tighter on the grass. He would have gotten this ball sooner. That's a tough up out of his glove. Decides to go home, and he just misses Faulkner with a nice slide for a big man. Just got in there. Six foot five, 240 coming at you there, Sam. That's a lot of base runner. Six nothing. Runners at first and third for Jeff Rebele. On the ground to third. Doodle has got his man caught off. Runs Hartwig toward the plate. Now it's Reynolds running Hartwig back towards third. And Hartwig is tagged out. But the runners move up. Good job. And now let's see. Hartwig looks like he is hurt on the play. Point. When he fell down, and may have uh, got his thumb caught. Either he wrenched his thumb or he, or he got spiked out there. Good play by Hartwig as he stayed alive in the rundown to allow the runners to move up to second and third. Once you're caught in that rundown situation, as you pointed out, Sam Rosen, once you're dead like that, you just got to keep, keep a thing going until the runners keep moving around the bases. Herb Brown? I thought everybody did an excellent job here, Rick. Run the runner back here. Make sure you tag them both. In this case, you don't have to. But look at the sportsmanship of Reynolds. He felt that the guy going down dislocated a finger. He immediately signaled to the bench. Did a great job. He evidently stepped on his hand yeah, that's right it. there and did not dislocate a finger, fortunately. Well, Reynolds knows about injuries. He's had a tough time this year with injuries. In fact, in a game against Miami that was televised, he went after a foul pop, and he ran head first to a TV camera and suffered a concussion. He wasn't seriously injured, but he knows about getting hurt. That pitch is in the dirt. Good block by Reynolds. Runners at second and third with two men out here in the top half of the fourth inning. That's Jeff Rebele at second. Burke Broussard at third. And Joey Bell, the right fielder, is the batter. He's 0 for 2. His first time up hit a hard grounder to short that Bordick could not come up with. And Bell later scored on a double by Jeff Yurton. Yurton with two hits and four RBIs in the game. Lubier's pitch is high. Count is 2-0. Oh. 
LSU leading six to nothing in the top half of the fourth inning. Junior Steve Lubier. Now Lubier is aware of the fact that he has first base open with two outs. He knows how good a hitter Bell is, and Bowie on deck has had a tough time so far in the series. Pitches foul back. Bell's thinking he wants that fastball back just one more time. Has a twin brother Terry on the team. But Terry doesn't play all that much. Both excellent students. Joey turned down a football scholarship to Notre Dame, played LSU, played baseball. Chance to pick up two more runs for LSU. Breaking pitches down low. It's three and one on Joey Bell. A three and one count on Bell. The last thing he wants to do here is serve up a really fat pitch. He's going to be very careful and try to get Joey to chase a bad pitch. After all, he does have first base open. Yeah, but you have big Jim Bowie, the left-handed hitter on deck. The fact that Bowie is left-handed and that Lubier is right-handed doesn't make much difference right now because Bowie's having his problems at the plate. Fastball fouled at the plate. Joey Bell looks like one of those players right now to me in the first two games that I've seen him maybe trying a little bit too hard to impress here. He's had such a great season, was the MVP in the regional tournament, has had the big home run and RBI numbers for LSU. Just looks like he may be trying a little bit too hard. Yes, he, is. he said he is a bright kid. He may be thinking too much up there, putting a little too much pressure on himself. He needs to relax a little bit. He's got plenty of talented teammates. He's have to carry the ball club by himself. Full count pitch to Joey Bell. Got him. So Lubier gets out of it. Rick Bernardo leads off for Maine in the bottom half of the fourth inning. The Black Bears of Maine were up seven to nothing over Arizona in game two of the NCAA College World Series. Lost at eight seven. Here they trail six to nothing. Bernardo, first team All America, the first Maine player to ever be a first team All America. And although he's obviously into this game right now, he's got to be thinking about tomorrow and that Major League free agent draft. Part of the distraction uh, that affects some of the players here. Well, it's always difficult. Series. Now, Bernardo's never been drafted, even though he's an All American, never been drafted, and he's a senior. <laughs> Hits that one hard to left center. Hartwig won't be able to get that one. One bounce to the wall. Bernardo is on his way to second. Makes the turn. He's going for three. And he will make it. A dangerous gamble. Down six runs. But Bernardo makes it. Most definitely a dangerous play by Rick Bernardo. It is a big ballpark. He does run well. But as you pointed out, Sam, He's down by six runs. You might as well stay at second base in scoring position, particularly when the ball is hit to left center. Now here with Papa John, John falling down, that's what Bernardo saw. He did, and you see he's hurt out there. In fact, right now, they have the medical crew out there looking at Papa John, but Bernardo keeps coming. That head first slide, he makes it easily. But again, if he had been thrown out at third base, you'd have to wonder about, boy, and if Papa John doesn't fall down on that uh, play, I don't know if it was his left ankle or his left knee, he's limping a little bit. Well, when he hit, when he got to the warning track, the warning track is kind of made up of gravel and loose sand. So what happens is when he, when he went off the turf of the outfield grass, watch his left ankle here, he just hits and he goes whoop. It's like being on the ice. You see a turn on him. He tried to dig his foot in to get the, the rebound off the wall. And he got the ball, but at the price of hurting his leg. Now, remember, Papa John, his trademark in this game is speed. So the last thing he wants to do is, is hurt his feet or his legs. Runner at third, nobody out for Maine. And Dan Kane, the designated hitter, steps in. LSU defense in the infield is back. They'll give up the run. Grounded to Broussard at second. The run scores. And Kane is out at first. Bernardo brings in 
The first run of the ball game for the Black Bears of Maine, 67th RBI of the season for Dan Kane. Broussard handling the play easily. There's one man out in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Let's talk about strategy here for a second. It is the top of the fourth inning, rather the bottom of the fourth inning. It's now 6-1. Maine just wants to chip away bit by bit by bit. They still have plenty of time to get back in this game, and they're going to hope, of course, that the heat and humidity takes its toll on Stan Lower. And curiously enough, the last batter that faced Steve Lubier, Joey Bell, chased a tough drop curve. So Lubier may have this curveball. He could be pretty tough. Good fastball from Lower. Count is one and one to Dan Etzweiler, the second baseman. My point is that's how momentum shifts, just like that. One pitcher gets hot, one pitcher gets tired. Before you know it, things can happen. Breaking ball on the ground to first. Hits the bag. Good play by Bowie on the lower. Fine play by the first baseman, Jim Bowie. As that ball hit first base and caromed off, and Bowie stayed with it. We talked about what a great hitter Bowie is. He's also a terrific first baseman. Not a big guy down there. When you play the ricochet off of first base and you pick it cleanly, boy, that's tough. Then he made a good throw to Lowell. Had to be there. Did that before, too. Fundamental baseball. He knows how to lead the pitcher. LSU will not beat themselves defensively. They are sound just as Maine is. That's what surprised a lot of people in game one when they lost to Loyola Marymount. When uh, Joey Bell misplayed that ball in right field, Lower's pitch is inside of Bill Reynolds, the catcher. So Lower throw a curveball to Reynolds. Reynolds said the other day of the 17 home runs he's hit this year, 15 came off hanging curveballs. It's that one deep to left field. Hartwig going back and can't get it. It's by him to the wall. Reynolds will go in with a double. Bill Reynolds hitting that curveball hard. Nice Hartwig try. A little upset with himself. Thought he should have had it. I thought he should have had it too. Of course, it would have been a heck of a play. Hanging curveball. I just mentioned he likes that deuce. Really drills it. Hartwick almost, ooh, got his glove on it. So saying, get your glove on it. You should have it. Well, it's interesting. You pointed out last time when he made that diving catch in left center field, he didn't get a good jump on the ball. I don't think he got a good jump on this one either. No, he didn't. Again, sometimes you have great speed. You tend to rely on your speed too much. That pitch in the dirt is blocked by Rob Leary. Ron Hutchinson, the right fielder, steps in. Now we said we've seen two balls well hit by Maine this inning. And you saw lower, telltale sign, drops that good curve ball in the dirt. Two men out and a runner at second for Maine. They've scored one run here in the bottom of the fourth. The trail six to one. Fastball line to third, and Yurton right there to grab it. Jim Bowie steps in. He scored a run on that delayed steal earlier. Now keep an eye on Steve Lubier and that big drop curveball. That pitch is at the knees. Count is one and one. Herb Brown. Well, you talk about a game of inches, fellas. Six to four in hits, but everything that LSU has hit today has had eyes. Hutchison's ball was a rocket. They've hit the ball every bit as good as LSU. They're down 6-1. Bowie takes ball two. Herb Brown makes a good point. It's a five-run lead for LSU, but I saw three rockets at last inning by Maine. It's going to get pretty interesting. Maine has got those good hitters up top of the lineup. They got 13 hits from five players in the game against Arizona. Count is two and two on Jim Bowie. And now it's full. Six runs, six hits, no errors for LSU. One run, four hits, one error for Maine. Lubier is kind of what they call sneaky fast that fastball nice easy wind up and deliver that ball comes a pretty good pop the home plate lost boy lead off walking again 
LSU with the leadoff man on. That's the fourth time in five innings that they've had the leadoff man on. The second man in the order got on in the first inning when they scored two runs. And here's Jeff Yurton. He has a double and a single and four RBIs. He doubled the left center in the first inning. One bounce to the wall and then hit a ground ball single in the third with the bases loaded to drive in two more. That pitch misses. That's three pitches in a row by Lubier, all fastballs high. But not missing by much. Well, maybe not, but you throw high fastballs to Jeff Yurton, they'll hit you a gapper. That one got the outside corner. Now, normally, with a curveball pitcher, if he throws his fastball high, he will come back with a good curveball to make sure that he gets the real, really drives that wrist action down, really forces himself to come down hard with his arm, really almost touch the ground. Oh, he dives back. Boy doesn't have much speed, and Lubio's pretty quick move to first base. That one's in the dirt. There's that curveball. You see that tape on the bat there of Yurton, about halfway up near the label. That's 18 inches from the bottom of the bat. That's an NCAA rule, 18 inches. On the ground, another base hit for Jeff Yurton, his third of the ball game. Bowie will hold it second. He had to hold up to let the ground ball go by him in the right field. But Jeff Yurton continues to swing the bat for LSU. Just to conclude that thought about the tape on the bat, that's there to make sure that no pine tar or foreign substance is above that above that mark on the bat. Look at the extension of his arms. Now you see Bowie do a little dance out here. Whoa, excuse me. <laughs> Got to find that ball both on the base as well as in the field. The catcher Rob Larry. Two on, nobody out. Hit hard, but right to the second baseman, Etzweiler on the board at one. Double play. Perfect double play ball. And Maine turns it over, a big one. Two men out and a runner at third is Jim Bowie. <laughs> Room service double play ball. Knock it down. Plenty of time. You saw Yurton go out of the base path there. And most of the time, a runner would go right into second base and try to knock the shortstop or second baseman off his pins. But that time, he got there so fast that Yurton was smart, got out of the way. Greg Faulkner struck out and walked and then scored the sixth run of the game for the Tigers of LSU. Good fastball. Dutel's got a tough play. He's got him. Dave Gagner, the left fielder, leading it off. Hits it in the air to short center field. Reveille going out, and it drops in for a base hit. As Papa John couldn't make the play in center field, dropped between Papa John and Reveille, and gagner has got a bloop single to start the bottom half of the fifth inning. And now we see what John Winkin talks about, that somehow, somewhere, he's going to get on base for you. He's a battler, Dave Gagner. He was here with the Black Bears in 1984. They went out in two straight that year. They're trying to avoid going out in two straight this year. They need a win to stay alive. Got a it's shot the there of Leary looking over to Skip Rippin for the signs. Mike Dutel, the third baseman, hits it over the head of the pitcher. Rebele is one. on second. Go to first for the double play. Good play by Jeff Rebele, the shortstop. That's a big league play because Rebele, and we said he's so gifted with the glove, it's difficult to grab the ball with one hand. The ball was not well hit. He came charging in. Watch him grab the ball while he's on the base. He's got to find the base, make the play, and still throw the first base double play. Boy, that's, that's top notch. There it is. He's right there to make the play. I am surprised that Gagner didn't give him a little bit of a pop in the second base. He was a sitting duck out there on second. Two men out back to the top of the order. Gary LaPierre, the center fielder, takes the fastball inside.
bullpen keeps working because I'm sure Bertman was aware of the fact that last inning three line drives well hit <laughs> off of lower. But pitcher's best friend, the double play ball, makes you look awfully good. Neither ball thus far this inning has been hit hard. The poop single and the ground ball over the head of lower. But of course, Bertman taking no chances. His short man, the pen, is Barry Manuel. Throws extremely hard. Just missed with that fastball. Count is three and one on Gary LaPierre. There's Skip. Giving the signs to Rob Leary. Slider puff foul behind the plate. Leary coming back, but it's back in on the screen. And Leary grabs it coming down. You saw that towel behind Rob Leary. Now, no, so far, no opposing coach has said anything to Leary about the fact that he has that towel back there. But I must say that if I were coaching, I would make a trip to the home plate umpire, Bill Rosenberry, and say, hey, wait a minute. Just because this kid sweats a lot doesn't allow him to have a towel in the back of his uniform. In fact, the fact that he sweats, if it hurts his play, so much the better for my ball club. Well, nobody's questioned it as yet. Nobody's questioned it as of yet. Full count on Gary LaPierre with two men out in the bottom of the fifth. Missed. Second walk allowed by Stan Lower. He's had pretty good control. Didn't miss by much on that one, though. He's a little upset with himself. I'm sure he is. About that towel, Sam. Now, let me say it's the right way. Nobody's accusing anybody of any uh, chicanery out there, but, you know, it's been known that pitchers occasionally put a little foreign substance on that baseball. You think the catcher would do that? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Mike Bordick, the shortstop. It's the breaking ball foul down the right field side. Back into the bleachers. Oklahoma State and Indiana State coming up tonight. John Sanders, Joe Morgan, and Irv Brown will bring you the action in that second elimination game. And the winner, the winners of this game will go on and play Wednesday night so they'll get a, a two day two days off to regroup and that'll help their pitching staffs for the losers today it's the end of the season and fine seasons for all of the teams that have made it to Omaha for this NCAA College World Series breaking ball hit hard to right center it's in there for a base hit around second on his way to third goes LaPierre they're waving him in LaPierre will score and Bordick is going for three and the throw is in time. He's out. Beautiful relay. to two Maine trying to fight their way back into the game they've gotten runs in the fourth and the fifth top half of the sixth inning Rob Hartwig leads it off the left fielder the speedy left fielder coming in against Steve Lubier who came on in relief of the starter Jeff Plimpton and this is Lubier's third inning he came on to start the top half of the fourth Plimpton went the first three gave up five runs three of them earned and once again, Dutel is in tight at third base. And as Irv Brown mentioned earlier, there's a game of inches. And Bordick, the shortstop, keeps cheating over to second yes, base. He does. And he cannot make that play in the hole because there's too much room to cover. And a lot of ground balls have found their way on, on that seam. Missed low and outside. Three and one on Hartwig. This is a guy you don't want to let get on base because he's got a lot of speed and will steal the base. And as we've said before, make things happen for LSU. Missed. 
Hartwig walks. And now Maine will have to react. And as a coach, you can really feel for John Winkin right now. He just saw his team run into the third out of third base. Now he sees Rubier walk off the leadoff man, who has great speed. Things are not going well right now for Maine. Papa John, possibility, hit and run, bunt. He too has excellent speed. Well, the way he's been hitting, I would think he might bunt. Runner fakes going, strike to Mike Papa John. He wasn't squaring, though. He looks down now to Smokey Laval for the sign. He's not hitting well, but sometimes, you know, Sam, you put the hit and run on for a guy, you take all the question out of his mind. He must swing at that pitch. Sometimes that works. Hartwig oh, dives back in. Leading the wrong way that time. Lubier is quick to first base. Nobody out. We're in the top half of the sixth inning. LSU leading six to two. Another throw over. I think Papa John by now is probably running out of superstitions. <laughs> He's got to make things happen. Runner goes on the ground down the third base line. Fair. No, it's foul. Just went foul at the last moment. Just kicked foul. That's a break for Maine because, of course, there's no way in the world they're going to get Papa John at first base. And they hit and run. Watch that bounding ball. It's fair now, but it kicks foul. Pretty close, though, Sam. Very close. Pretty close. They're going over the corner of the bag. Down is 0 2 on Mike Papa John, the center fielder. He is 0 for 4 thus far in the College World Series. Michael Plato Papa John. Choking up on the bat now with two strikes. Hardwick's going again. Pitch is taken. The throwdown is not in time and goes into center field. Hardwick on his way to third and he'll get there. Reynolds hurrying the throw. Put it in the dirt. It skipped past. Bordick and Etzweiler and Hartwig with his good speed is on at third with nobody out. If there's one great weapon in college baseball, it's speed. Makes everybody defensively a little more nervous out there. Hartwig finds the ball and he's off to the races. LaPierre does not have a particularly good arm in center field. And from first to third, and it brings the infield in, and Papa John. Now it's to make contact. Stolen base, error on the catcher, on the throw. Second error in the game for Maine. Count is one and two on Mike Papa John. Pitch misses low and inside. And the shadows are beginning to play a, a part in this ball game, Sam. Get a shot there of the shadows coming into play. Early evening shadows. It's now a little past quarter to six. Local time. Papa John goes down swinging. A good pitch by Lubier. There's one man out here in the top half of the sixth inning. Let's see if Broussard will do something here with a runner at third. He'll put anything on, maybe a squeeze. He handles the bat very well. That's LSU has made it very apparent to me they can't take anything for granted. It's very tough to play a solid defensive ball game when you're always looking for something to happen out there. Lubier pitching from the stretch. Good fastball on the inside corner. Now the main infield is not in on the grass. They're actually closer to halfway in the last time on an infield out or an infield ground ball. That's Weiler's throw to the plate was not in time. A run scored from third. On the ground is short. Bordick juggles it. Has to go to first. The run scores. There's two men out. And that's an excellent point. The fact they're playing off the grass, they have to know that Hartwick can fly any ground ball hit anywhere he's coming, no questions asked. That time, Bordick made a nice play, but he got the ball back in the dirt part of the infield. But that time, by the time he juggled the ball and threw to first base, Hartwick was already in the dugout. RBI for Burke Broussard. Here's Jeff Rabelais, the shortstop, who has been outstanding in the field this afternoon. LSU leading seven to two. We're in the top half of the sixth inning. Rebelay also is two for three in the ball game. 
Good pitch on the outside corner. The breaking ball from Rubier. That's his pitch. That big curve ball comes over the top. It's one of deception as opposed to one of fear. Pretty good fastball. Goes up ball inside and tight in the right-handers. Tries to work that breaking ball down and away. That breaking ball is over. Count is one and two. Once again, between innings, LSU starting pitcher Stan Lower is warming up outside the dugout, just throwing the ball, not really warming up, just keeping his arm loose. And now he walks back into the dugout. Here is the pitch to Revelle high and inside, and the count is two and two. But it had some long innings for LSU, and as a consequence, he just keeping himself loose down there. Surprised with this heat that uh, he wouldn't be loose or that he would even tighten up. Well, the heat tends to really tire out your legs and your back. It doesn't really tire out your shoulder. If anything, your shoulder will tighten up a bit. So to keep your muscles loose in your arm, keep that lactic acid flowing and circulating, getting oxygen to those important muscles, you got to stay loose. And sitting on the bench, yes, that keeps your, your back and lower uh, leg muscles in good shape. There's not much for your arm. Herb Brown, what do you see down there? A very, very loose LSU band. They were playing putt-putt late last night. Skip does a great job handling them, fellas. He's stolen two runs today with Hardwick's speed, the delayed double steal. They're very loose. Up the middle, Bordick gets over. He can go to his left wall, that's for sure. He's had trouble going to his right today, but he made the play that time. Here's Rick Bernardo. He led off the fourth inning with a triple and scored Maine's first run. This is the kind of situation that LSU wants to be in against Bernardo. They know that Bernardo is a big man in the lineup for the Black Bears, and they really like it if he has to bat against him that he leads off against them, and nobody on base. Mm -hmm. Second time he's leading off an inning. On the ground foul. First team All-America, Rick Bernardo, came into the game batting 431 with 19 homers, 18 doubles, and 72 RBIs. He keeps his hands way behind his body. It's like a cobra up there. It really tucks his body in, sort of like a Stan Musial type, Sam. And he really turns in the pitch very nicely, very quick. Pitch stays outside. Count is one and two. Stan Lower on the mound has done a good job for LSU. In fact, there's been only one put out made in the outfield this afternoon. And that was on the first batter, the fly ball to left center field. That one popped in the air to short left. In comes Hartwig. He's there to make the catch. Well, that's the second outfield put out. Hartwig has them both. Good pitch that time by Lower. He got inside on Bernardo and fooled him. And the best he could do was to hit it off the inside of the bat and on the hands and pop up the short left field. The designated hitter Dan Kane steps in as you look at the shadows starting to creep out over the infield. You see Irv Brown in his box seat <laughs> next to the dugout. He's got the best seat in the house and doesn't have to pay a penny for it. It stays inside. Dan Kane drove in the first run, a ground ball to second, back in the fourth inning. A couple of mistakes by Maine have been costly in the game. Well, they've been some mistakes, but they've been put under pressure by LSU, and they're just hustling out there on offense. Well, I think the base running mistake last inning hurt them as well. Yes, it did, but again, you, you can't really fault a kid. Uh, sure, it's, it's good baseball sense to stay at second base, but gee, you know, if you're going to hustle, okay, hustle. 2-1 to Kane, fouls it off, swinging late on that fastball. It's like talking with Ron Fraser of Miami about the fact that his kids are always trying to put pressure on the other team. He said, I said, well, hey, Ron, what happens if a kid gets thrown out taking the extra base? He said, that's all right. I want him to do that. But that's okay when maybe you're down a run. You know, if you're down a run, it's one thing. But when you're down four runs, a little wider margin, you've got to take every opportunity to get back in the game. When you've got Bernardo coming up, you've got to know your situation. Breaking ball, hit to right field, down the line, slicing into the corner for a base hit. It goes to the wall, and Kane is on his way to second. 
Kane holds up, and this time, right fielder Boyd had trouble picking up the ball, but Kane playing it safely holds it second. Kane hits that ball well to right field. Now, he does not run particularly well, so he's just glad he got the second base. See this pitch on the outside corner. He's a late swinger. And you'll see he just puts the bat on the ball and just, just keeps slicing away out there from Voigt. Has a hard time picking this ball up, but fortunately for LSU, Kane just gets to second base and stops. It's Jack Voigt, the right fielder, came in to replace Joey Bell. This is Dan Etzweiler, the second baseman. Had three hits against Arizona's 0 for 2 today. Hits the breaking ball foul down the left field side into the crowd. One man out. One runner at second with Maine trailing 7 to 2 or Brown. I'll tell you Sam I really think he's tired. They're getting serious in the bullpen down there. It's been a tremendous job by the right hander but it is warm as Rick has pointed out. Could see a change. Don't uh, don't be too surprised if Skip goes to the pen. The right hander is Dan Kite. The left hander is Greg Patterson. Side. Wets Weiler, seven hits in the game for Maine, seven for LSU. The Tigers leading seven to two here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. It's two and one. And Sam, as Irv pointed out, Lower is beginning to have some problems. And really pinpointing his control out there. He's a little tight in that pitch, a little high one before. His velocity has dropped down considerably. And Skip Burtman, who of course is a master when it comes to pitching, not going to take any chances with a five run lead. Off the hands. Good play by Lohr. Had it gone through, it might have been a tough chance for the second baseman, Broussard. But Lohr able to get it and make the play at first. I keep hammering at the point that once a pitcher throws that ball, he's a fielder. Bends way down, get that ground ball. As you said, Sam, saved a very difficult play for a second baseman, Burke Broussard. Anytime a second baseman has to come charging at a ball, it's, it's a real do or die kind of play. He also made a big pitch, a real good pitch to Wetzweiler in on the hands. Here's a visit from Skip Burtman to find out if he's okay. At this point, Burtman just wants to give him a breather, say, let's talk about it. How do you feel? He's doing fine so far, but talk to me. In fact, you see he's talking to the catcher, Rob Leary, as opposed to talking to the pitcher. When you go out to the mound, you talk to the pitcher, how do you feel? They say, I feel great. I'm right. doing fine. Talk to the catcher. And Leary is a real heads up kind of guy. I would say, hey, Skip, he's lost it. He's still got it. Let's stay with him. One more batter. Freshman right-hander from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, making his 22nd appearance of the year, 16th in relief. Correction, his 15th relief appearance. Pitching to Don Hutchinson, the right fielder. Hutchinson hit the ball hard his last time up. Lined it to the third baseman, Yurton. That pitch is high and inside. And Sam, just to go back to that scene before, we saw Skip Burtman go out to the mound and then come right back after the home run by Reynolds. Looked he was, like he was pretty irritated. He wasn't irritated at lower. He's probably mad at himself because he calls all the pitches. He called for that curveball. 
Down is two and two with two men out. The home run by Bill Reynolds. Bringing Maine back into the game. And showing a lot of character. This Maine team that suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of Arizona. And the Wildcats won it on a two out, two run homer by Dave Sherman on a 3 2 pitch in the bottom of the ninth inning. Maine blowing a 7 0 lead, lost 8 to 7. Here they're down 5 0, 6 0 at one time. Now it's 7 to 4. Hutchinson works the walk. Left hander Greg Patterson continues to throw in the LSU bullpen. And quickly out of the dugout comes Skip Bergman, and he's going to the bullpen. You have to wonder with the fact that Dan Cott, who does throw hard, has pretty good stuff, but he is a freshman. And Skip Bertman not taking any chances at all. He sees the walk and says, hey, let's stop things right here. Let's go with a little more experience. So Kite faces one batter and walks him. And Greg Patterson, a sophomore from Gonzales, Louisiana, is coming into the game. Runner on first with two men out here in the bottom of the sixth. The left fielder, Dave Gagner, had a bloop single. His last time up. Barry Manuel, the All-America right-handed relief pitcher, is up in the bullpen for LSU. Their hard-throwing short man. That was good fastball from the left-hander, Greg Patterson. Breaking ball hit in the air down the right field side and slicing back into the crowd. Dave Gagner, good catch. As we said, it's been the inspiration for the Black Bears all year. Way to go. Brought his glove, made the catch. Can't go to the ballpark. I bring your glove. I got mine here at my briefcase. Well, if you sit behind the screen, it's useless. You've got to sit out there and get the sun in the bleachers, get the, get the souvenirs out there. 0-2. Fastball outside. You know, Sam, I'm really impressed with the way these pitchers in the College World Series really have an idea on the mound. They're just not hard throwers. They really try to paint a picture up there on each batter. So that time, Patterson tried to go outside with the 0-2 count, try to keep that pitch away, hoping that Ganya would chase it. Don Hutchinson, the runner at first, with two men out. Maine scoring two runs here in the bottom of the sixth. Good slider. Ganya is struck out. Leary dropped the ball, throws down the first for the put out. corner Boyd has some power he has eight home runs hit in the air to left center fear LaPierre got a good jump on the ball Gary LaPierre the sophomore center fielder plays a shallow center field and got a good jump on that ball off the bat of Jack Boyd got a great look that time from behind the umpire, the ball just jumping off the bat. No better feeling than seeing that ball just leave your bat the same way it came in, like a line drive. Of course, it's disappointing when it's caught. Jim Bowie's walked twice in the game. I have a feeling Mr. Bowie is going to have dreams about seeing that low inside curveball. Despite having trouble on that low inside pitch, Bowie's been patient up at the plate. He hasn't really chased it. The pitches he swung at have been strikes. He just hasn't been able to make contact on either the fastball or the breaking pitch in on the knees. Good point, Sam. A mark of an excellent hitter is the one who will not chase a bad pitch. Now, again, he's not hitting well today. He has a strikeout, but he's walked twice. And it's 3 and 0 right now. Sure. So if you get. Two or three walks and keep your, your offers down to 0 for 1 to keep that batting average around 300 or even close to 400. 
Good fastball at the knees. As a hitter, you have to know what your strengths as well as what your liabilities are. You have to adjust from the, what the pitcher is trying to throw you. That's the fastball at the knees. Bowie laid off it, but it was over for a strike. Well, with a 3-1 count, he was looking for the fastball away. The ball came in tight. He says, no, I won't swing at that pitch. Great discipline. Now let's see what Lubier gives him 3-2. Hits it hard to the second baseman. That's Weiler. Two men out. Goes as a 4-3 in the book, but it's a one-hop line drive out to the second baseman. Very disciplined, very patient hitting. Now here's Jeff. That ball is way out of here. No doubt about it. Third run off Lubier in four innings. Good curveball to Rob Leary, the catcher. Maine keeps fighting back, but as soon as they score a couple of runs, here comes LSU again. We voted Frito Lay player of the game for each team. I think Jeff Yurton has already locked it up for LSU. Lobier <laughs> gets the inside corner. Took a little off that pitch to Leary. You got to have a real good kind of day to lock up uh, that kind of award. It's only the seventh inning. What a day he's had. Two singles, a double, and a home run, and a good chance to come up in the ninth inning and maybe go for the cycle for Jeff Yurton. Got him swinging, the ball in the dirt. Reynolds throws down to Bernardo for the out, and the side's retired. Bird Hooten pitching for the Texas Rangers, who starred for the Texas Longhorns. James Overstreet pinch hitting. Now for the main Black Bears, lines it off the glove of Bowie in the right field. A base hit. Hitting for the third baseman to tell who was 0 for 2 in the ball game Overstreet who had a fine regional in fact made the all tournament team in the Northeast Regional when he played in replace of in place of Hutchinson who had the sprained ankle sees the first pitch slices it to right field Bowie gets a glove on it but it's hit so sharply he can't make the play and the Bears come battling back again. Ninth hit of the ball game for Maine. Back to the top of the order for Gary Lapierre, the center fielder. LSU leading eight to four. Good fastball by Greg Patterson. Of course, it's always tough coming off the bench. When you're a pinch hitter, you just want to make contact. The best way to do it off a left-handed pitcher is to go to right field. Again, the fastball. Patterson looking like he's got good velocity. 
Perhaps you can read the signs this time up for Rob Leary, the catcher. Looking for number one, the fastball, number two of the curve. Oh, two to LaPierre. Breaking ball on the ground to third. Yurton to Broussard one. for one. On the bowling. Yeah. Double play. Yeah. The excellent infield defense of the Tigers of LSU turns another double play. Real clean turn that time by Broussard. We mentioned he's not very big. 5'6", gets that pivot in a hurry. Gets out of the way. Boy, that was real pretty pivot. Third double play in the ball game for LSU. Boy, the pitchers love that. Patterson watches it go around. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two men out. And Mike Bordick doubled his last time up to drive in a run, but was thrown out trying to stretch it into a triple. He's two for three in the ball game. Good fastball by Patterson, but just missed. You saw that time Larry put that finger down for a fastball. It's always fun to watch the catcher flash those signs. Tigers of LSU were ranked second in the nation coming into the NCAA College World Series. They looked a little tentative in the game against Loyola Marymount. I think we're seeing them play their type of game today. Fastball foul tipped at the plate. Not still alive. No question about it, Sam. These guys have played all year an aggressive, hustling kind of game. They play solid defense. They really want their opponent to handle the ball, make make you make the other team throw them out, handle the bunt, handle the hit and run. In this game, what a difference from against Loyola Marymount. I love the way the infield is playing though for LSU. That ball fouled out of play. The infield defense has been outstanding all the way around. Bowie has made some solid plays. Yurton has looked great, and the second base shortstop combination is outstanding. Really, just terrific play. Count is two and two on the shortstop, Mike Bordick. We're in the bottom half of the seventh inning with LSU leading Maine eight to four. Good fastball, and Patterson strikes out Mike Bordick. For the Black Bears of Maine, here's Rob Hartwig, the left fielder. On the ground is short again to Bordick. Two men out. That's Ron Polk, the head coach of Mississippi State. Did a good job of rebuilding his team this year. They finished out of the playoffs in the SEC, but had a winning year, 34 and 21. He, of course, lost two of the great players in college baseball, and Will Clark, who's playing for the San Francisco Giants, and Rafael Palmero is now playing double A ball in the Dodgers or in the Cubs organization. Good fastball. Mike Papajohn, the center fielder, is in. Still hitless in the World Series. Today, 0 for 3 today, 0 for 2. Well, the lemon and lime may not have worked for him, but it's yeah. working for his teammates. We got to talk to him about this. He's a real carnival in the field, I'll tell you. Hit in the air to short right field. That's Weiler. A couple of steps out on the grass. Sides retired. Good inning. He'll trail eight to four with Rick Bernardo leading it off. Bernardo is one for three, a triple. He's leading off an inning for the third time. We said last inning as well, you don't want your big man to lead off if you're main. You want him up, of course, with men on base. That old baseball adage, you don't want other team's big man to beat you. That is one and one. Three, four, and five in the order for Maine here in the bottom of the eighth. Hit hard to third. Yurton right there. Yurton has had a fine ball game. Irv Brown's had a fine game, too. <laughs> Sam, I'll tell you, Rick made a, an excellent comment and a point on Bernardo I'd like to support. This guy coils like a snake. He's got as good a wrist as anybody in this tournament. Can't believe number seven has never been drafted. I want to see what happens tomorrow. 
I'm very curious too. He does have a, has outstanding wrist. Come on, Dan, you can tell when he has those arm muscles around around the elbow really popping up like a Popeye. Just tremendous wrist action. Dan Kane, the designated hitter, doubled his last time up, went to right field with a pitch, and then scored in front of Bill Reynolds, who hit a two-run homer in the sixth inning. LSU leading eight to four. The winner stays alive in the World Series and plays again Wednesday night. For the loser, it's the end of the season. So the question here is whether that plane's going to fly north to Orono or south to Baton Rouge. Good fastball. Patterson looking good. But seriously, you know, Sam Rosen, the fact is you get to the final eight in the College World Series. All these teams are outstanding. Tremendous programs and some fine teams didn't make it here. Texas being one of them. We can go on and on. Michigan, UCLA had a great year. Bobbled by Revelay, can't make the play. But again, there are eight teams here, only one champion. But let's face it, all eight teams here are really champions. Revelay charged with an error on this ground ball. Normally very sure after he got his, the glove on the wrong side of his body, peeled that ball a little bit off on his right hand side, and it cost him that time. Sometimes he gets away with that. That time it cost him. Kane on first, and Dan Etzweiler will stand in. Etzweiler has not had a good day at the plate. Greg Patterson looking in, sophomore left, left hander. Breaking ball hit hard to right field, a base hit. Kane will hold it second. Maine trying to get something going here. And one thing I've noticed about Maine the last few winnings, they're not taking pitches. They want to jump on that first pitch, and that time Etzweiler, who's been relatively quiet all day, saw that curveball hung up there in his face, and he jumped all over it. The Black Bear marching through the stands. Maine fans getting excited here. Two men on, and here comes Bill Reynolds to the plate. And at this point, Skip Burtman has to be thinking about the fact that he's got Barry Manuel, his ace reliever, in the bullpen warming up. He's been warming for some time now. Last two balls hit rather sharply. Doesn't want to let Maine get back in this ball game. And of course, Reynolds, we'll see how he pitches him here. He likes that curveball. Of course, most kids like the fastball. He likes that deuce. Reynolds, two for three, takes the fastball outside. Double and homered over the left center field wall. Remember, he hit four home runs in a row against St. John's in the regional. 18 homers this year. Missed that pitch on the inside. Now, Burtman probably knows by now no more curveballs. You've seen two fastballs now from Patterson. One man out. Runners at first and second. LSU has turned three double plays in the game. Looking for a ground ball again. They get the ground ball. Broussard to Reveille. One. one on the buoy. Fourth double play of the game for the LSU Tigers. They turn it again. And at the end of eight, LSU leads Maine eight to four. And here's Burke Broussard. Boy, the infield defense for LSU. I think we'll uh, give Reveille an exception for that uh, error. He turned the helped turn the double play to erase it. Well, overlooked that one miscue, That's right. but four double plays at critical times. That's the true test of an infield. And this young man right here turns as good a pivot as I've seen in the college ranks. So that only started without a home run. When you're 128 pounds, you're really going to have to hit him. Very, very hard to get a home run. I think of this guy running start. <laughs> Have to hit the ball from second base. On the ground to third. Overstreet takes it in the midsection and gets him. James Overstreet came into the ball game replacing Mike Dutel, the starting third baseman. Here's Jeff Robillet. Had an outstanding ball game. Couple of base hits. Senior shortstop. Co-captain, the leader out on the field. 
It's got that, for the LSU Tigers. It's got that Cajun name, Ribele. From Kettering, Ohio. <laughs> oh, I love that. Eight runs, eight hits, one error for LSU. Four runs, ten hits, two errors for Maine. You saw Rebele try a bunt again. Bertman, LSU coach, wants these kids to keep going. Don't stop now. Hit in the air. Short right field, Etzweiler goes back. Let's it go to the right field of Hutchinson. Smart move by Etzweiler. Gave way to Hutchinson who called them off. It's always an easier play for the right fielder coming in than it is for the second baseman going back. There is a slight breeze here, and it is a tough sunfield out there. Two men out in the top half of the ninth inning. The Southeast Conference champions, the LSU Tigers. The ECAC champions, the Black Bears of Maine. Slider hit in the air to short left field. Bordick going out. In comes Gagner, and Gagner makes the catch. Don Hutchinson, the right hand right fielder, leads off against Greg Patterson here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. He has to get on base somehow. We want to get around to the top of the order. He's the number seven man in the order. Good pass ball by Patterson. Greg Patterson has done a good job. Yes, he has. Coming on in the seventh inning. Yes, he has, and he's got Manuel in the bullpen still warming up. He's been down for, oh, three innings now, still throwing. Good fastball again by Patterson. Foul back in the crowd. Count is one and two. Wind is picked up and is blowing in from left field. Ball and Hutchinson fights it off. The wind just picked up out of nowhere. It's had a pretty good, almost a gale force blowing directly in from left left center field. See the flag there. That does not help the Black Bears cause at the plate. That wind now blowing in. Slider missed outside. It's two and two. Breeze must be coming out of Louisiana. <laughs> Beautiful day for baseball here in Omaha, Nebraska. Just missed low. Yeah, like the way this Hutchinson hangs in there on against the left-hander. He's not giving an inch. The freshman from Natick, Massachusetts, Don Hutchinson. 3-2. Fouls another one off. Seemed to recall a pretty good football player from Natick. Doug Flutie. Not bad. This main team should be pointed out. A lot of good players that could be back depending on the draft situation tomorrow. Etzweiler and Bordick are juniors. Dutel is a freshman. Hutchinson's a freshman. Lapierre is a sophomore. Hit hard down the left field side. Deep but slicing foul into the crowd. Yeah, but regardless of the draft, Bernardo is gone. John Reynolds is gone, too. Right. Two right. key players. The pitching staff, most of them will be back. Plimpton is a sophomore. Scott Morse is a junior. Perhaps this youngster will get a scholarship. <laughs> Lubier is a junior. Again, Hutchinson fouls it off. LeBlanc is a junior. The key men. Powers, their uh, ace reliever, is a junior. If I can make a generalization, when it comes to recruiting college players, I think most coaches would agree with me. It's a lot tougher to find good pitchers than it is to find oh, good sure. hitters. So if you have the meat of your pitching staff coming back, you're in good shape. Full count pitch again. And Hutchinson fights off another. Doing a real good job at oh. the plate. Battling Greg Patterson. These Black Bears won't give an inch. Kid just hanging in there. Just trying to make find a little contact. Flapped up ball left field. Up the middle. Revelay just can't handle it. 
popped up at the last minute. Tough chance, should be a base hit. What a job Hutchinson did at the plate. He forced Patterson to throw 11 pitches. Guess what I want to do is make him work out there. Now, Reveille did an outstanding job getting to this ball. Most shortstops in college wouldn't even get a glove on this. Just get by Patterson. He goes, oh, Doug, gun. I wanted that one. That ball just hopped up at the last second. Gagne puts it on the ground. Wide of third. Yurton is there, gets a force what? at second. They won't get to this time. Ball was hit too slowly. But Yurton showing good range at third base, getting over there to make the play at second. Yurton is really a very, very excellent third baseman. Came and got that ball. No question in his mind he was going to Broussard on this ball in this force out. Here it comes. And Broussard getting a little bit ambitious there for another double play. Can't really blame him, though. That's Yurton. What a ball game he's had. Four for four. Two singles, a double, a home run, five RBIs, and some outstanding plays in the field. James Overstreet up. Good breaking ball from Patterson. And I'm a little bit surprised, Sam, that you saw Gagne swing at the first pitch. Now we see Overstreet swing at a curveball. Especially after they make Pat they made Patterson, or Hutchinson made Patterson work so hard. Sure, make, make him sweat out there. Put a little pressure on him. Got the breaking ball over. So Patterson, who'd been throwing a lot of hard stuff, goes to the breaking ball. And he's 0-2 on Overstreet with one out. Bottom half of the ninth inning. And LSU leading 8-4. Skip Bertman giving the signs to his catcher, Rob Leary. Fastball missed, but not by much. You know, when Skip gives those signs, he's not only just calling the pitch, he's also telling Rob Leary the location, inside, out, wherever he wants it. Curveball hit foul. And Skip has only called a couple of bad ones today. One was to Bill Reynolds. Yes. That Stan Lower served up, turned into a two-run homer. Bernardo had a triple that was hit hard. Reynolds had a double in the ball game. Main has had 11 hits, but four double plays for LSU have really been a big factor in the ball game. One, two. And Overstreet fights off another curveball. That's a tough pitch to handle, that sharp breaking curveball in on the hands. Oh, that's that's real tough because the only way you can hit it is to get the bat fully extended and really get your arms out. So it means you got to pick up the ball up in a hurry. Most guys can't do that. Got him on a fastball. Set up the fastball beautifully. Two curveballs in on the hands. He fouled him. Sophomore center fielder Gary Lafierre played left field last year. This is sophomore left-hander Greg Patterson. Down low. 
John Winkin, 40 years coaching baseball. What an outstanding man. What a great career. 12 years at Maine, and six times he's brought his teams to the NCAA College World Series. Fastball hit in the air to short right field. Long run for Boyd. It's slicing away, but he makes the catch. And the ball game is over. The Tigers of LSU stay alive in the NCAA College World Series as they defeat the Black Bears of Maine 8-4.